Raivi wants to know, I just finished my AOS 7 V5. AOS 2807 motors, gem fans, Cinelifter, 7-inch, 3-blade props. Flew with some 6S2P dark lithium batteries, great batteries. Changed to my 6S1P tattoo to push it some. On a punch out, the drone screamed like a pig being butchered. Yeah, I know that sound. That was prop deflection. Um, what's happening is you're making higher RPMs with that high C-rated tattoo battery. And your prop is fluttering. And it makes this horrible screaming sound. The answer is you need a stiffer prop if you want to use that battery. That prop is not stiff enough for that battery. That's the answer. Switch props. Or don't raise the throttle that high. The Donnie Llama, thank you for a $10 super chat. I have a Foxier T-Rex analog camera and the GEPRC Mate 10 Pro. I am not getting Betaflight OSD. Um, the number one thing that, I mean, you check your wiring. Somehow, maybe you've wired it wrong, so you're bypassing the flight controller. Um, I assume you, you wired it correctly. The other thing to check is the NTSC and PAL setting. Both in the flight controller and in your goggles, you want to make sure that the NTSC PAL setting is correct. The simplest thing you could do is go into the camera menu and change it from NTSC to PAL or vice versa. Also a reminder that uh, you may have flashed without the OSD being detected, Ooh. so you may need to add the OSD chip in the build. That's good. Let's just, uh, yeah. I was going to, uh, I was waiting for you to say that, Plenty. Yeah, that's it. Oh my goodness. So uh, here in the firmware flashing screen, if we just choose a target, any target, we can see we've got the build options down here. And one of those options is OSD. Let me zoom in on that. Uh, and if somehow you manage to delete the OSD build option, then what is happening would occur for you. In addition, I guess it's worth checking, as long as we're being exhaustive. Here in the configuration tab, there is an option here which will turn off the OSD. And if you've done that, you won't have an OSD. So, all things to check. Um, and... Also, I was also saying, like, you can also have the OSD chip not included, as far as I know, in the build, and you have to manually include the OSD chip. Oh, in I guess the that's define. possible. If it's not in the target. Are there, are there any targets that really do that? I mean, I guess it's... I mean, with all these random AIOs, I can imagine. So. It's possible, I guess. Dave T, thank you for a $5 super chat. Considering a digital whoop, 65 millimeter currently analog, the new AIO5 is appealing, but I don't have HD0. Worth is subjective, sure, but ups and downs. Well, I mean, if you want a 65 millimeter uh, digital whoop, then the AIO 5 is, the I think, the best way to do it today, no question. But uh, do you, you know, want to commit to the HD0 system to get that experience? It's hands down better than the analog experience uh, in terms of the video quality, yes. In terms of the range, meh, 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 meh. Uh, it's, it's, it's comparable. A little shorter battery life, I think. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, uh, in terms of worth it, uh, I think that the AIO5 is the closest to a no compromises digital tiny whoop compared to analog that has ever existed. There's a small compromise in terms of weight. You get an analog down to 16, 17 grams. The AIO5 is just a little heavier than that. And a small compromise in terms of uh, battery life. But much better video quality. But you got it. Then you're like, okay, do I want the HD0 goggles? Do I want the, the, the you know, there's a little bit of a commitment to buy them that money. The HD0 goggles are great analog goggles. So you could say, oh, I'm getting new analog goggles at the same time. Carson, thank you for a $5 super chat. I'm getting a Nazgul F5 V2 soon. I'm looking for battery or action cam combos that keep weight and flight time reasonable. 
Thirty dollars or less per lipo, ideally. Um, uh, honestly, if you are getting, man, um, if you're getting the digital one with an O3, which I'm gonna guess you're not. I just have a feeling from the way you've worded this question that you're not. But if you're getting the digital version with the O3, don't run an action cam. There's no reason to. Unless you're doing cinematic shit. Like, the O3 is more than good enough for putting your awesome stuff on YouTube. You're not going to do any crazy color grading, probably. If you're moving up to real cinematic shit where you want color grading and 4K, okay, then get, like, a GoPro. No compromise. Um, but the best thing to do to save weight is to leave the action cam off. Think about it. Think about it. You're trying to do awesome shit. You're crashing. You're breaking a $400 action camera. It adds 200 grams of weight. Why not just record DVR? Oh, my DVR looks crappy. Well, eh, nobody's watching your content anyway. Save yourself the money and the weight. And I say that as someone who regularly spent $400 on a GoPro to put up flight content that nobody watched. I get it. I'm just trying to be the voice of reason here. Um, as far as well, keeping less weight... Stuff to break. Yeah, it's less stuff to break. That. Your quad will fly better. Uh, as far as keeping weight and flight time reasonable, GoPro thumb? I mean, not GoPro thumb. Uh, run cam thumb? It's okay. I mean, I would if you're going to run an action camera, I probably would run a, a GoPro because it's going to give you the best results and the best footage. You know, um, if you want high definition footage, then you probably want good footage. Get a get a boy. Get a uh, GoPro with a Best Buy warranty and just bite the bullet, or don't run it at all and just record DVR.